You read the title. Today we'll be making a perfect tic-tac-toe butt. But why tic-tac-toe? Well, essentially, tic-tac-toe is a fundamentally broken game. Essentially, you can always guarantee that your opponent doesn't win. So, if you always choose to block your opponent from winning, well, it's essentially a draw, and it's more question about dexterity than actually being good at the game. If you imagine it like a matrix structure, there essentially only exist two outcomes for each player, if they both play perfectly. Essentially, player one will always either win or have a draw, and player two will either lose or have a draw. And for the same reason, I feel that this is a really good beginner exercise if you're trying to learn game design or trying to create AIs or using data structures. And I wanted to do it! <laughs> so, well, first we need to create the game. And surprise, surprise, I used Unity because it's amazing. And honestly, creating Tic-Tac-Toe was actually easier than I thought. First, I just created a bunch of UI elements and rescaled them to make it look sort of like a grid. Then I created nine cells, which with each cell containing two child images, one being the circle and one being the cross. Each cell also got the cell controller script, and through that I was able to control which was active, either the knot or the cross. That script was then controlled from the game manager script, which kept track of all cells. And it basically does everything else just by using a state machine. It was, however, only designed to be played by bots, so it didn't have to deal with manual inputs. And when the game starts, it chooses a random player, and waits for that player to choose a number between 1 and 9. Then, after doing that, it places either the knot or the cross, and then switches to the other player, where it does the same. That way, I could simply implement the bot as a function that returns an integer, a number between 1 and 9. And that works really well. So that way, we can just start off with our first bot, the random player bot. Essentially just choose a random number between 1 and 9. The problem I had to find a solution to is that because we had bots against bots, they could place the <laughs> nuts and crosses instantly. And because they were based on code execution, they could essentially finish the game in six frames, <laughs> which would not be very interesting to watch. So I used some, I essentially blocked the code from running through a coroutine for a specified amount of time, just so that we were actually able to see what was happening. <laughs> And this is how I can claim that it's perfect, because I maybe sort of cheated in a way. I made it so that the game only plays for six moves, so each player has three moves and enough to place their pieces. If no one wins, the game starts over. And why this is what makes it perfect, I will explain now. To create the perfect bot, I used a min-maxing algorithm. Now, for any of you that haven't studied algorithms and data structures, this might not sound familiar. So, let me explain. Imagine a tree, where at the root is the player, or the bot, or it could be you. And we just started the game, so there are nine positions. Nine possible positions you can place your piece. So imagine that this is nine different branches you can go down this tree. You can either place it in position one, two, three, up to nine. Let's look at position one. So that was your move. You placed one piece in position one. Now it's your opponent's turn. Now one can't have your opponent's piece. So imagine that your opponent places it in either two up to nine. That we can illustrate with another set of branches like this. Now imagine your opponent chooses position number four. Then it's your turn again. And we illustrate this again with a new set of branches. And now imagine you choose position number two. Again, we go back to your opponent. He chooses position number five. Then we go back again, and you choose position number three. Now, notice that this branch will actually lead to you winning. Therefore, we can say that this branch, this very, very specific branch, has a plus one in outcome. But let's say that we go a little bit back, and instead of you placing your number three, you place number seven. And we, your opponent places number six. That would lead to a win. So that branch would be a minus one. Because you lose. If we do that for all branches, we will get a sum total of positions you can place in. And that way, we will know which position is the best. 
And because the game finishes after six move, moves, we are always able to find the best position possible. And this is how we created the perfect bot. If you look, here's the code. I use something called recursion, where the function essentially calls itself. It tries to find a solution for where it is, and if there are more moves left, it calls itself again and again and again, and then it returns best possible value. And this is how it looks when it's implemented. Here the perfect bot is playing the circles against the random bot. And yeah, that was basically everything I had to say about this. I hope you found this at least somewhat interesting. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.